Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today I have some really exciting stories for you, starting with new support for DLSS 3. This CPU is a great price. The 7800X3D is already on sale. Ryzen desktop APUs are coming, and this is the RTX 4060. But first, with new CPUs and GPUs coming out, make sure you're ready with Meld Alerts. The completely free sign-up that sends you an email when new PC hardware is releasing. Because let's be honest, keeping up with all the new PC hardware releases can be tricky. And don't worry, I'll only tell you important stuff like CPUs, GPUs, etc. Plus, I'll send you great deals as those come out as well. That way, you won't have to worry when new PC hardware is releasing. So yeah, it's completely free at meldalerts.com, and it only takes you a couple seconds. So make sure to check that out below. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, we have an interesting story from NVIDIA themselves. As you can see right here, this is an update on NVIDIA's DLSS 3. It's apparently coming to Diablo 4, Forza Horizon 5, and Redfall, but... They also added some fairly interesting points here as well. Starting things off, you can actually see that they claim DLSS 3's frame generation is currently in 28 released games. Now, obviously 28 doesn't sound all that great or amazing, especially since it's been something like six months or so since it was actually announced, but according to them, that 28 games is apparently seven times faster than the adoption rate of DLSS 2 in its first six months. So I guess you'd say it's really not bad at all. Not only that, but Nvidia also announced when we move down here, that it's in fact coming to Unreal Engine 5.2. As you can see right here, in February 2021, we released our free DLSS2 plugin for Unreal Engine, making it a cinch for any developer to accelerate the performance of their game or app, further accelerating adoption of DLSS. Well, as they state, in the near future, DLSS3 will be released as an Unreal Engine Marketplace plugin for Unreal Engine 5.2. So as you can see, quite a few announcements here, and of course it is interesting to see DLSS 3 coming along so fast. Obviously, AMD is preparing their FSR 3.0, which is set to come with frame generation. So it'll certainly be interesting to see how AMD is able to implement this. Obviously, DLSS 3 is only supported on NVIDIA's newest RTX 40 series cards. So if AMD is able to add support with frame generation to not only their 7000 series, but older GPUs as well, and potentially, like with their other FSR, just maybe NVIDIA GPUs as well, that would be very interesting to see, and it would almost certainly be a massive blow to NVIDIA. But of course, time, as always, will tell. And next up for today, we have a story from WCCF Tech, where they show that AMD's Ryzen 9 7900X has dropped in price. More specifically, on the Chinese retailer site JD.com, they revealed that they're discounting the Ryzen 9 7900X to 2899 RMB, and that converts to $420 US. What's interesting about this is that that new pricing actually puts it below the Ryzen 9 7900 non-X variant, which is actually at 3199 RMB. And as you can see right here, that is still up 2899 down to $420 US. And I will say that that is actually fairly interesting because it is pretty close to the price of the 7900X in the US, specifically on Amazon. Right now, it's just $432. And of course, while we have seen it a little bit lower than this, it's still really not bad at all, especially because I thought they were going to move the prices up once the non-X models came out, or at least lower the prices of the non-X models from what AMD originally announced them at, just because their X models were at the time at really good prices. Well, it looks like they are still doing really good deals on their X models. And of course, I'll have an affiliate link to this one down in the description below if you're interested. And while on the topic of Ryzen CPUs, our next story comes from video cards where they have a really interesting story. As you can see right here, the upcoming monster gaming CPU, the 7800X3D, has already been listed in Europe for, well, at least 530 euros. And when we move down here, we can see that computer-based, even though uh, AMD has not officially announced a retail price in Europe, you can see it right here, it's obviously set to be $449 in the US, 
but they haven't actually confirmed a retail price in Europe. But Computer Base actually speculates that it should cost around 509 euros. They base that because both the 7950X3D and 7900X3D were around 13% more expensive than in the US. So that 509 euros sounds about right, but it is already available right now. As you can see right here, Funtech actually has it for 550 euros, which is obviously quite a bit more expensive than that 509 euro price. And in fact, I'm fairly certain that at one point here, it was actually at 530 euros, so they've apparently upped the price a little bit. With that said, it seems pretty clear that they don't actually have them right now. They've just effectively listed them for sale, but this gives you an idea of about how much it'll be. And of course, this pricing is likely higher for early adopters because they'll probably begin selling them quite a bit earlier than others. And there's actually another site, FutureX, which is selling them for an absurd price, 809 euros, so... Obviously, these are very early pricing. I wouldn't expect anything like that. Either way, they are obviously coming soon, so they are starting to list them online. And next up for today, we have a really interesting story from Tom's Hardware. As you can see, this originally came from a table from the Gigabyte hack last year. Now, obviously, I'm not in favor of people trying to hack company hardware or, you know, hack databases, things like that, and reveal that or just hack it in general, especially not reveal the information later. But because this is already out there, I thought I'd at least discuss it. When we look right here, you can see the leaked information reportedly points to three types of Ryzen processors that employ the AM5 socket. They all belong to the processor family 19H, and it says that type 2 refers to Ryzen 7000 lineup, so obviously we already have that, but there's still a type 1 and type 3. And according to this, it states, we believe that type 1 may be the Ryzen 6000 series Rembrandt, which is really interesting because we never saw Ryzen 6000 actually being released on desktop, which obviously was pretty annoying just because Ryzen 6000 actually had RDNA 2 iGPUs. So it would have definitely been something well received for gamers, especially because I'm Fairly certain it was something like a two time increase performance over the Ryzen 5000 APUs for the iGPU. So definitely interesting there, but this is looking like the reason could have been because these were made for AM5 boards. So they obviously had to release those AM5 boards, Ryzen 7000 to go along with them, wait a little while after that before finally releasing the 6000 series processors. So it at least somewhat makes sense here. But get this, it actually gets even more interesting. According to this, they claim that type three could be the Ryzen 7040 series Phoenix processors, which if you followed along with that, you know they actually include not only Zen 4 based CPUs, but they also include an RDNA 3 iGPU. Basically, these are set to be some seriously powerful APUs, and it'll be really interesting to see AMD bring these to the desktop market. And lastly for today, we have a really interesting story that was originally leaked by the leaker Kitty Yuko on Twitter. And as you can see, this is a Founders Edition design for the RTX 4060. And similar to the RTX 4090 and cards like that, you can see that the fan actually cuts into the shroud on both sides. And really, it's extremely reminiscent of the RTX 4090 Founders Edition card, although of course, it's set to be significantly smaller. We can see another angle right here from the back, Looks pretty good, not a bad looking card at all. And what's interesting is that at least according to this, while it is labeled the RTX 4060, the leaker claims that it may in fact be the RTX 4060 Ti. What this tells us is that Nvidia likely plans the exact same Founders Edition card for both the 4060 and 4060 Ti. Now, why it would actually say 4060 on it and potentially be a 4060 Ti, I'm not sure, but like I said, it likely just means that they both use the same shroud. And of course, a 4060 Ti would actually say 4060 Ti, but, What's interesting is that they actually shared something else. We can see right here that apparently Nvidia was in fact planning to release an RTX 4070 Ti Founders Edition card. According to that same leaker, this card is in fact from a 4070 Ti Founders Edition card. And it has a similar sort of V 
kind of bored right there. Then we look over here. So this is a little bit with it inside the shroud, likely set to be very similar to say that 4060 card, but obviously maybe a little bit beefier. And what I think is most interesting about this is that the reason Nvidia almost certainly didn't release it was because of the whole issue with that 4080 card that Nvidia canceled and then ended up releasing as the 4070 Ti. So that's almost 100% the reason why we never really got it. Just with all of that effectively shifting down, the 4070 Ti is likely gonna be now called the 4070. 4060 Ti would be the 4060, 75. Anyway, you get it. They likely shifted almost all of their designs down, or maybe they just took that 4080, made it into a 4070 Ti, and then just got rid of what they were planning for a 4070 Ti. Of course, all of this part is nothing but speculation, but it is interesting to see an actual Founders Edition 4070 Ti. Oh, and I forgot to mention really quickly the specs, or at least the expected specs, these so far leaked specs of the RTX 4060 and 4060 Ti. As you can see right here, here, the 4060 Ti is expected to come with 4,352 CUDA cores, which is a pretty massive downgrade from the 4070, which has 5,888. Then it has 8 gigabytes of GDDR6, not GDDR6X, 128-bit bus for 288 gigabytes per second, and comes with a default TDP of 160 watts. Then we have the 4060, which apparently comes with just 3,072 CUDA cores, 8 gigabytes once again of GDDR6 across a 128-bit bus for 150 watt TDP. So clearly these cards are gonna be very cut down from the 70 series and even more so cut down of course than the 80 series, but I would argue some pretty big gulfs between all of these cards. So you're definitely not gonna see say the 4060 Ti being around the 4070's performance or anything like that like we have seen in the past. Hopefully pricing will reflect that, but we shall see. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for Nvidia's upcoming RTX 4060 and 4060 Ti, or are you more excited for AMD's 7800X3D? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.